Hi, in this video, you're going to learn how to save user preferences across multiple sessions. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Oftentimes, you want to save user preferences like the colors they want or hiding a tutorial screen. Well, in this video, we're going to learn how do we save preferences across multiple sessions so when the user comes back, they get the experience they want out of Power Apps. So, to do this, we're going to employ a table first of all. We can do we can store this data in SharePoint or in a table. Uh, we're going to choose a table here just for its uh, scalability. So let's go to my computer screen real quick to see. So over here, you'll notice at this point that we do have a table that is um, uh, storing. Oh, I'm going to look at our values here. So I, I stored a, a set of key pairs here. I'm storing the uh, setting name. This might be like hide the tutorial screen. And then I had the value of true, false, and the username also, you know, which value you want to store and for whom. So we're going to use this table ultimately to see the values of, 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 what, of what settings they want. It might be something like the, uh, the background color they want to keep or those kind of things. So all those kind of values we're going to keep. So let's go back and look at the Power App. So we're going to use the new screen that Power Apps offers, uh, the tutorial screen. This is an objective that we have right now. So let's go ahead and create a new screen and we're going to make this a tutorial screen. Well, the great thing about tutorials, uh, this is one of the new screens they have available inside of Power Apps, is it gives us the ability to go through and, and uh, kind of communicate with our customers. The bad thing about it is some people want to skip those all the time. They don't want, after the first time, they don't want to ever see it again. So let's go ahead and first of all, to make this tutorial screen work, I'm going to move it all the way up to the very top. So I have to do this a few times here to get it up to the top. And I want this to be the first screen that our customers are going to see. So I'll just call this just um, SCR, oops, SCR tutorial. Okay, and when the customer comes the first time, ultimately I want them to be able to skip this as well. So to do that, we're going to put a button here to allow the user, allow the customer to skip the screen. So I'll go ahead and create a button real quick. Okay, I'll put that in the bottom right and I'll call this just uh, skip in the future. Okay. Now this won't be the prettiest app. This is actually one of our real apps here. We use at Pragmatic Works that we're about to launch. But uh, in this case, so I had to skip this in the future. If they do click on that, I want in the future to go ahead and go through that and uh, add that setting. There's a few ways we're going to do that setting first of all. So when they come back to the screen in the future, if they had selected to skip the screen, we'll jump right to screen two after that. Uh, so to store this setting, we're going to use a, a table I've already added. So that table is one you saw a moment ago. And we're going to add a form that we're going to use to save the settings. But before I do that, I need a, a few variables I'm going to use throughout this. So let's go over to Actions. And for this screen, I'm going to have an on start action. So let's go ahead and go to Screen. Oops, there we go. And uh, oh, and you'll notice right now it's because it's because I need to actually close this and come back. Looks like, but I'll just I'll, I'll use on visible right now. Now that I've once I come back here, the on start will be available for this this right here. The reason why it's not is because it still thinks that this is my starting app right here. So if I close it, whatever's on top will show that. So if I close it and come back, it will be there. But for the time being, let's just go ahead and do it on visible instead. And I'll create a var uh, set, and we'll do var current user. There we go. And we'll make that equal to comma, uh, we'll make that equal to user dot email. There we go. Now again, that would ideally be on the start, but that's going to make me close the app and open it up again. So we'll keep this as simple as possible right now. Now, that'll be my first variable. I, the reason I'm doing that, uh, creating this as a variable, this is going to be a global variable. The reason I'm actually putting the username in there or the email address in there is in some cases, there's some types of uh, queries like lookups, where if I use this, this function right here, it will be a delegated function, which will cause a whole data set to come down. But if I store it into a variable and then use a variable, it works beautifully. So just a, a few little tips there that you might encounter as you use that function. Now the next piece I want to do is I want to I want to do a lookup against that table. So I'm going to do a little semicolon represent a new batch, and I'm going to set another variable. I'll, I'll call this just variable skip tutorial. 
There we go. Comma. Again, this is the global variable, so it's going to work across screens here because of that. And this is basically the pattern. We're going to have a, a variable per preference we want saved. So it could be the, the background color, or in this case, skipping the tutorial screen. So in this case, we'll, uh, we'll do a lookup. Okay. What data set do you want to look up against? I want to look up against the setting value. And I'm going to pass in two values. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in, first of all, uh, the username. So username is going to be equal to uh, var current user. There we go. And then um, I also want to make it and percent. Double and percent means I'm going to concatenate two values together. And the value I want also is going to be the setting name. So setting name is going to be equal to, oops, sorry, one equal sign, equal to, and let's call it skip tutorial. Okay, so now we'll have the, we'll have the combination of what does Brian want to do for the skip tutorial setting? And what is it currently set to? Uh, and I want to return, so I need to do a comma here, I want to return the actual value that's set. So that'll be the value I'm going to put inside that variable. Okay, so that's how we can do concatenated lookups now. So now that we've done that, we have this new variable we can use to route this uh, throughout the rest of the preference. Now, the way we're going to trick this is we're going to create a form behind the scenes. And there's a few ways we can do this. That button we created earlier, well, one option is we can create a flow that whenever you click on that, it updates or in our case creates a record in the database for that that that, that setting uh, in my case I'm just gonna kind of hide a form inside this so we're gonna create a form that has the appropriate settings and when you click on that button it's going to run an add to the database to, to create that, that setting now in, in most applications we see they create a settings page and a settings page will have a list of all the settings you can set uh, you have this color background color start on the screen whatever yada 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 hit save that goes over the database and it's one big bulk update in my case we're gonna make it very very uh, strategic and on this screen only you can set the settings so a few ways you can do it flow or a form uh, flow is a more elegant solution uh, I'm going to choose to use a form here just because I, I only want this one setting saved all right so let's go back over here again there we go and uh, looks like we've got there we go got some kind of okay well oh, it's giving me some grief here I looked away for a few seconds. Uh, unexpected characters is probably because I have a open parenthesis. I need to close parenthesis again, looks like. There we go. All right. The, the benefits of live recording where you're not uh, copying and pasting, I guess, right? So with that now done, the next thing we want to do is create our form that's going to run the update against the system here. And just to kind of, to kind of debug this a little bit, we can, we can drop this in, and this little label in here, and just see the value of that, um, of that setting right now. And you'll see right now, it looks to be, well, it has a, the function doesn't run, right? So what we could do is we can, we can, well, it's blank right now, right? So we can wrap that and it is blank, and we'll come back to this in a little bit later. So if, if it's blank, then display the value of false. Otherwise, just display the var skip tutorial value. So we'll use that code a little bit later to, to, um, to, to show it. But we'll say, uh, you know, something like a value is, just so we can kind of debug what's going on here. And it looks like, OK, if is blank to tutorial. OK, uh, it looks like it's missing open, open, close, and uh, close. I am not batting well for my closes here today, am I? OK, there we go. OK, Okay. so we can see right now there's no value set to it right now because it's blank, and it's setting it to false. So we need to kind of build some logic around that. Uh, for example, this button, for example, we want to say, hey, if that variable is false, then we want to go ahead and, and, and stay on the screen, for example, otherwise jump. So there's a little bit of workarounds we're going to do that are a little goofy here on this one in particular example. But the first thing we're going to do is create that form. This is going to be an edit form, and this is going to be hidden eventually. I want to point to my table. My, my table is like the, uh, the setting value, and it um, doesn't really matter here. I'm going to hide this in a moment. I want to get the setting name, the value, and the person. Okay, the other other value there is an identity column, and then we'll go through and unlock these values. So let's just start the username here. Okay, and the de the uh, the default value for that right now is just blank. So let's go ahead and go over here for the username, and let's set his value to user colon backslash email. So let's be the email address in there. Let's do the same thing for uh, the setting value. I think I called that one, if I remember right, I called that value um, skip, um, what do we call that one? OK, 
Okay, it'll be uh, uh, skip the tutorial. That's what it was. Okay, and the oh, actually, sorry, that's going to be true. There we go. And the last one here, the setting name, that will be a skip tutorial. Let's go ahead and unlock that. Go to the actual value and pop that in. So this is the value I want written to the database when somebody clicks on that button. So now that we have this done and we have it in a reasonable state, let's go ahead and there's one more thing we want to do. So by default, you'll notice that this, this form is starting in edit mode. It's trying to edit the value versus actually go through and create a new value. So it's trying to go into update mode. So in my case, if the variable value, if I kind of go back on that fault, let me go ahead and hide this form first of all, just so we can kind of kind of get out of the way and not have to look at it. Let's go ahead and hide that. There we go. So if that value is false, like this guy right here, then I ultimately want to put that whole form inside of um, uh, edit mode. If it's, if it's sorry, new mode, excuse me, if it is, if value is already there, go to edit mode perhaps. So let me look for our form. There's our form right there. Let's give it a better name. Let's give it a name of just uh, FRM update. Um, how about we call it um, update uh, value? I don't know, something silly like that. And so for the default mode right now, the default mode is edit, which is incorrect. It's going to try to edit a value that doesn't exist right now, so it's going to give me a bug in that case. So let's go ahead and just pop in the code that we created a little bit earlier. So, But in this case, if there's no value, rather than be false, I want that form mode to be a new mode. So form mode dot new. There we go. And otherwise, we'll put it in edit mode. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we can't see it right now, but right now it'll be a new mode waiting for a new value and it's not gonna be in updating that value now. So now this button right here, we want to wire up. So we wanna go ahead and submit the form. So on select, submit form. There we go, what form do you wanna submit? I think it's gonna be called, I forgot what I called it now. Uh, update value, there we go. And then after that, navigate to the next page. Uh, I'll leave that code out for the time being so we can kind of debug this. So we have the, the rudimentary piece that we want done. Uh, uh, that's the benefit of live shows again. All right, so we had the rudimentary pieces done we want, but now we need to do a few more things to make this this this, uh, this application work. The first thing we wanna do, let's, let's test this out. I'm gonna hold the Alt key down and test this out and we'll see if we get a value back in this database. As you can see right now, there's no value inside this. So if I were to run this now, there we go. It's gonna go ahead and think for a second. Now it would've, save the value, then jump to the next page. Let's see if we have the value back in the database. We do have the value. So now that we have that value, we want to skip this page in the future and actually read that value. So we can see it's actually reading the value. So if I were to leave the page and come back, for example, uh, close this app and come back, like we would have to do in this case, because uh, there's no way to get back to the tutorial after I'm done, um, we, we can go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead, now, you'll notice there's one goofy thing. So the first thing I thought when I, when I looked at this is on visible was, to say, all right, after if if the value is um, if the value is this, and do that. I was trying I was trying to think of a way of navigating to the next page inside of on visible. Unfortunately, the on visible function uh, will not work for navigation. It actually, it'll block you from doing that. Saying the screen will never load if you do that. So you have to kind of trick it. If you want to skip the tutorial page, like I'm doing here, you have to kind of trick uh, uh, Power Apps to do this. Now there is probably about 50 ways of doing this. Uh, the way I chose this morning was to set a timer in place and uh, on and basically put zero seconds on the timer, and then if if the value is set, then go ahead on, on end the timer, then redirect the next page. So it's kind of a little goofy way of doing it, but a little workaround, and it's the only way I can find to do it. If you think of a better way, though, put it in the comment section. Let us see how you get around this scenario. So back over here again, uh, I'm gonna drop a timer. Control. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna hide this, don't worry. Uh, I'm gonna put, uh, I'll put one millisecond on this. Uh, duration and then for the auto start right here so let's go ahead and say we want to make it where oh, let me go ahead and a timer control think of it like you're under apple timer you hit the go button and when that timer is set to zero when it when it goes to double zeros something's going to happen right so in my case i want the timer on 
on timer end to navigate over to the page. So navigate over to the other page, navigate to my second page in. I'm gonna do no transition so it won't look like uh, the timer is ever seen. And there'll be a slight delay here. So there might be, the user might see the screen for a half a second and then it'll go away. Unfortunately, there's no way to say skip this page altogether on that. So we're having to kind of do a little bit of a work around here. But it does increase the customer satisfaction a little bit here. So on timer end, it's gonna jump to the next page. Now I only want that timer to automatically start so there's a auto start property here, if the variable is set to true. So we could just put the variable right here, uh, skip the tutorial in there, and if that variable is set to true, then I'll go ahead and run that. But we get a warning here saying, well, you know what, that what the value is blank, what's gonna happen then? So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and steal that code that we did a little bit earlier, that basically read that if it's blank, we'll go ahead and assume it means false. Otherwise, we'll read the value out. So now, if I select this, go ahead and hide that value. Okay. And if I run this, we'll see everything looks hunky-dory. Uh, now let's actually open it up outside of Power Apps after I save this. There we go. And see how it behaves now. So if I open up this, this app right here, okay, it's gonna go ahead and, and open up in a few seconds here. It's gonna read the database, make a decision, and then hopefully redirect me to the next page in. We'll see here in a moment. All right, there it goes, read the database. Okay, I see the ants crawling up here. It's a little bit sluggish right now. Azure is not very happy right now. Oh, let me go ahead and skip it. I might want to, the value is set to right there. Oh, you know what, I actually uh, didn't, didn't publish there. So let's go ahead and go out here. Let's close this down. There we go. And let's come back to refresh those variables here. So let's go back here again, they're open and select our OKR app. And we're going to run the app again, and it's going to you know, read the variable. We should see now that that value should be set to true now. There it goes. Okay. And when I run this, hopefully, there it goes. It immediately jumped over to the next page in at that point. So it looks to be working now, right? So we had a few goofiness, you know, the, 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 with the, uh, we had to create timers and all that to make it work, but this is a workaround, right? So the, uh, the typical options you're gonna do are gonna be much, much simpler than this, right? You wanna change the color of the, of the app or you wanna change um, what, that, what customer you always pull up by default. Those kind of things are gonna be much, much easier to do. Uh, this one's a little trickier because we have to navigate and skip screens. And you saw it's about a, what, a half a second delay there, a one second delay where it, it shows you the page before it redirects you. So this is, there's again, two ways we can save those settings. We can create a form, hide it, or we can use a, a, a power, a, a power a work, a flow, excuse me, inside of uh, the power platform to write back the database also. I found this setting a, a little bit easier for onesie, twosie settings, uh, but it's completely up to you on how you want to implement that. All right, well, Thank you for joining me today. This is part of our Power Apps training class. You can find that link down below. We can also create apps for you as well if you go to our website at uh, powerplatformpro.com or at pragmaticworks.com. You guys have a great day. Look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.